Hello, everybody, and this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest on the show today. We have Sarah Wellband, and she is remedial hypnotist, and she's here today to tell you a little about herself and what she does and how she works with people with all different types of conditions and how she helps people from all around the world. Sarah, I'm so excited to have you on the show. Why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Sure. Hi, Stacey, and thank you for having me on the show. Um, I am a remedial hypnotist, and I work with people with all sorts of conditions, from anxiety to weight loss, um, phobias to pain management. Um, lots of people have heard of hypnotherapy, um, which is a very standard, pro uh, standard treatment these days, but remedial hypnot hypnotism is slightly different in that we don't use hypnosis. So there's no uh, trance involved. People are wide awake. They know what's going on. They can hear what's going on. They can see what's going on. And very simply, I have a direct conversation with the person's subconscious mind to find out what's happening, what's where the blockage is, what, what's causing the issue. And very simply, I ask the part of the subconscious which is holding the client back to change their behavior. Um, the subconscious always wants the person to be happy, happy and safe. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes they're working on information that's out of date or was misunderstood in the first place or is just no longer appropriate. And once the part of the subconscious is aware of that, they can change that behavior very quickly, that pattern of thought very quickly. Um, so it's very effective um, and it's not long winded. We have a free initial consultation to make sure that this type of, of therapy is right for that person. And then typically we have three sessions. Um, and by the end of the third session, the issue is not only resolved, but I've been able to teach the person how that they can how they can talk to their own subconscious. So if there are any issues come up in the future, they don't need to come back to me. They can they can do the work on themselves. So it's it's um, very very effective, very accessible, um, and it works. That's which is the main thing. Yeah, it is very amazing. And, you know, so many people like don't understand the concept of hypnosis, you know, like in a lot of times, I don't know, um, in your area of the world, but they'll have like, you know, entertainment, you know, where they'll have people come on the stage and they're like, oh, we're going to hypnotize you. And, you know, people get the wrong conception of hypnosis. Now, maybe you can like go into more depth about what how hypnosis actually works. And, you know, a lot of times also, does it date back into our, uh, the root cause? Does it usually go back into our childhood years or maybe something traumatic that has happened along the way that just, you know, maybe we were pressed and we didn't even realize we were pressed. And then, you know, how does that work? Okay. So the, the way I, um, explain the concept, the concept of the mind is if you imagine, in the mind is like a ship mm -hmm. and the ship has it has a captain and the captain represents your logical rational conscious thought it's what you're using at the moment yes but there's only one captain on board the ship so they can only concentrate on one or two things at a time uh, a really good example is a chef you often think that a chef is multitasking but if you actually watch them they're concentrating very much on one thing they're moving on to something else moving on to something else right so, so the captain is the, the, the rational part of your mind. You then have the deck hands, the people that the, the, the captain can see, and they represent your automatic, automatic actions and automatic thoughts, mm -hmm. such as walking, talking, driving, all the things that you do every day without necessarily any conscious input. Yeah. Below the deck of the ship, you've got the subconscious mind in the engine room. And the subconscious is in charge of your, your creativity, your memories, your imagination, and your emotions. Mm -hmm. So all the things that are bubbling away underneath the surface are controlled by your subconscious mind. So when you are a child, when you're a baby, you're all subconscious. You literally don't have the, um, 
intellectual ability to think consciously about things and to decide whether something's right or something's wrong. And the example I always use of that is if you ask the average five-year-old mm. to believe that there's a man that flies around the world one night of the year delivering presents in a wooden carriage pulled by reindeers, the five-year-old will go, yeah, yeah, no problem with that concept whatsoever. Yeah. Um, once the child gets a little bit older, they may go, uh, I'm not quite sure this is possible. So you've got a really key period between about 18 months old and nine or 10 years of age where the, the crew are just trying to keep the, the ship afloat and keep it safe. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we learn more during that first decade of life than we do at any other period in our lives. Yeah. We absorb information, we're told things, we see things that we don't understand. Mm -hmm. So we're learning an awful lot about who we are in the world, who we are, who other people are, what the world at large is like. Right. And, and they become, they form what's called our core beliefs, our tr the truths that we believe about ourselves. Right. And unless those core beliefs are challenged later in life, as far as we're concerned, they're absolute. Okay. So most people, most people will have a, a, a childhood of positive and negative. You know, nobody has an absolutely perfect uh, childhood. Thankfully, very few people have a completely negative, but we will learn things along the way and we will go, okay, that's true. A very silly example is if, if, if grandmother um, is afraid of spiders and screams. Well, grandmothers are always right, aren't they? Therefore, <laughs> spiders must, must be a scary thing. <laughs> and that's that's why so many people will go into adulthood and they will go, I know that spider can't hurt me, but they will go. They they will say, there's a part of me that is still scared of them. <laughs> and when when people say there's a part of me, they're talking about their subconscious. Yes. Okay. So um, that's the concept of how the mind works. And that's why in a lot of ways, traditional topic, talking therapies aren't effective because it's, it's a conscious mind talking to a conscious mind. Yeah. And the, it's not the conscious mind that's the issue. It's the subconscious underneath. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what I do is um, ask the part of the subconscious which is causing the issue, be it a fear of public speaking, be it um, emotional eating, um, a, a pain that doesn't need to be there, or anxiety or trauma. Ask that part of the, the subconscious which is responsible for that behavior to come forward um, and talk to me. Um, and that sounds really weird, but we use we do that by way of IMRs, which are the emotive responses of the fingers. Mm -hmm. So quite simply, I will say to the client, I would like the subconscious to move a finger to say yes and move a finger that says no, to say no. And when the person goes, that's really weird. <laughs> My fingers are moving independently of me. I know I'm talking to the subconscious mind. Yeah. So I'll say to the subconscious, are you the part of the subconscious which developed a fear of public speaking at high school? Well, maybe say yes, I'll say, okay. I know why you did that, um, because at that stage in your life, um, social acceptance and being part of the peer group was really, really important. And if you made a, a, a fool of yourself in public speaking, that was, that was death back then mm -hmm. that was the worst thing that could happen right. so that part of the subconscious would go we are never doing that again i am going to protect you from making a fool of yourself by stopping you from public speaking right and to do that i will trigger the emotion of fear i will trigger the emotion of anxiety and if necessary i will give you a bad stomach or, or take your voice away but i want to protect you from that horrible experience yeah so when somebody's in their, their 20s they don't that, that's really unhelpful. Mm -hmm. um, so I talked to that part of the subconscious and say, look, that was a great strategy. That was, that was great. But you don't need to do that anymore. And actually, you're now working against the person's happiness. So can you please stop? And nine times out of 10, we'll go, we'll get a, oh, okay, didn't realize, sorry, I'll change that. 
Right. And I'll, I'll ask the person to imagine themselves in a situation where they're now up on stage and, and giving a presentation. And very often they'll go, where's my feeling gone? Where's, the, where's that panic gone? Where's that anxiety gone? Right. So, well, it's, it's stopped doing it. doesn't need to do it anymore. Yeah. And, and because the, um, the subconscious works on a very childlike basis, I don't like using the phrase in a child because that assumes you've got that, um, there's, there's, there's the inner child and the outer child. It's basically, mm -hmm. it's, but it's working on a childlike mm -hmm. premise. Right. So it won't argue or just say, okay, this behavior is good. It's now not good. I will change it. Right. Um, so that's why, one, it's so quick, because you're not getting into long-winded arguments. And also, why not having the trance is really effective? Because in hypnotherapy, if you put somebody into a trance and you need some information from that person, you have to bring them out of the trance, have a conversation, put them back. It's very long-winded. Yeah. Whereas if I hit a block when I'm talking to the subconscious, I simply say, can you put the conscious, can you, can you tell Stacy, Stacy's conscious mind, what you want to say to me? Mm -hmm. And I'll just say to the client, what's jumped into your mind? And m most times they will say, ah, oh, I've forgotten about that incident with my, my father or my brother or, or with a schoolmate. Um, that's what it's trying to tell me. Mm. So again, it's, it's a two way conversation rather than a, a passive um right. passive type of therapy so um yeah wasn't exactly a short answer sorry <laughs> no, that, no 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 i was gonna ask so you're not talking to their conscious mind you're, and you're not talking you're not in a trance you, you know you don't have that person in a trance so it seems yeah. like you have them kind of like in that happy medium where they're not they're not conscious but yet they're not into a trance so exactly like how do you get them into that into that happy medium that where that area where they're not they're not conscious but yet they're not in a trance okay so they are conscious the person is is sitting okay. there they they often have their eyes closed but otherwise they're quite aware of the conversation i see i see um the the analogy i use here is the nightclub or the disco so in traditional hypnotherapy um, you've got the bouncer on the door and you've got all the thoughts and all the behaviors and actions bopping away in the nightclub. Yeah, yeah. And the bouncer will say, you're not coming in. You know, you you, you, you don't fit. So in traditional hypnotherapy, the, the bouncer will effectively be put to sleep. They will be, they'll be knocked out of the way by the trance. Okay. And the, the therapist will go into the nightclub and try and find the part of the subconscious, which is misbehaving, mm -hmm. always dance, dancing to the wrong tune. Mm -hmm. um, with what I do is I actually ask that part of the subconscious to come out of the nightclub, to come out and talk to me directly. Because we don't realize it, that our bodies are not just about um, conscious communication. For example, if, if you have a drink next to you and you just happen to knock it uh, and it was falling, mm -hmm. your subconscious reaction would be to grab that before you'd even consciously aware of what was happening. Right. So our subconscious and our conscious, whilst they're all part of ourselves, they can they can work independently. I In see. fact, the sub the subconscious can work far better independently than the conscious because when you're consciously working on a problem, um, you will be consulting your subconscious on well, what happened the last time I did this? Or what was my experience? And what are my memories? You know, am I able to do this? Right. Um, so the subconscious, I, I'm sure you've seen the the diagram of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. So you have the top of the iceberg pointing out of the um, the sea, of the ocean. Yes. And that's, that's the part that we see. Right. And then you've got this massive iceberg under the surface. Right. Which is the part that we normally can't, get in touch with right right so it seems like we're really tapping into um diving deep into ourselves and really being so relaxed that we could actually understand the the problems that are 
that, you know, the, that root cause that's, that's causing whatever issues we may be going through. And, and yeah, oh. ex exactly. Um, I suppose one of the really good examples of this is trauma or PTSD. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so, so when something traumatic happens in somebody's life, a part of the subconscious is basically given the job by the mind to figure out what happened mm -hmm. for the, the express reason to stop it ever happening again. It was so awful, so terrible that we need to avoid that in the future. Yes. And the only way we can avoid it is by knowing exactly what happened. Were we responsible? What was our role involved? Um, mm -hmm. Could we have done something different? Could we have avoided it? Right. Now, when something happens like a road accident, for example, and the, the police come and say, well, the other driver was drunk or they're on the phone or whatever, that generally means that the mind can say, OK, we couldn't have done anything about it. That's not traumatic right? because there's a, there's a resolution, there's an answer. But sometimes things happen in life which are just so random that there isn't there isn't a reason. Right. Or the person or people involved, the other people involved, will not give you the answers you need. Mm -hmm. So what happens there is that that part of the subconscious, that member of the crew, will just keep working and working, like on a hamster wheel. Mm -hmm. And that's why people suffer from from flashbacks, from intrusive thoughts, from memories, because it's it's going over the thing again, simply to find out how do I avoid that in the future. Right. Okay, so what we, what I do with that is ask that part of the subconscious to come forward to talk to me, mm -hmm. yes and no. And I simply ex explain that it's rather like a jigsaw puzzle. If, you're give, if I gave you a jigsaw puzzle and said, this is your trauma, complete this jigsaw puzzle and it'll be done, except half the pieces are missing mm -hmm. and a can of white, white paint got into the box at some point. So there is no... There's no way that this will, will never be resolved to your satisfaction. Right. And once you say that, once you explain that to the part of the subconscious, they will just say, okay, I'll stand down. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm never going to find an answer. There isn't an answer. And therefore, there is no point in trying to find one. Right. And I, I worked last year with somebody who'd <clears throat> had a, a series of very traumatic, completely unrelated incidents. And... She gave a really good um, explanation afterwards. She said, I can still remember them, but when mm -hmm. I try to reach for them, it's like they're covered in oil. Mm -hmm. they, they, they just fall out of my grasp and they can't hurt me anymore. Right. Um, so you, you, don't, you don't forget about it, but the emotional connection, the, 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 the emotional damage that that's done is repaired. Right. And that is so powerful. Um, no, it is. Yeah. And yeah. that can go back generations. It seems like, you know, once you realize that you can never fix that, and you, it's, it's, it's a process of learning to let go and just let yeah. it, letting it leave. Yeah. Exactly. It, there's no solution. So just let no it solution. go. Yeah. And again, in um, traditional therapy, bit of hypnotherapy or, or other types, that can take years. Yes. Because you're talking to the conscious mind. Mm -hmm. When you delve down into the subconscious, the subconscious wants you to be happy. Right. And what once you say to that part of the subconscious, what you're doing, one has no purpose, mm -hmm. and two is actively making this person unhappy, then it'll say, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll stop. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. I thought I was doing the right thing. Right. Um, and therefore, we'll, we'll, we'll stop. And... It can get it's it's pretty much instantaneous. Um, that's why we work with a three session protocol because we don't need to go on for weeks and weeks or months and months. It's just not necessary. Right. It's some people say it's magical. I say, well, the magic's inside you. It sounds like it's magical. I understand the concept. I understand why it works. Because you're 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 able to figure out the the root cause, and then you're able to realize that the pieces are missing, that there's no way of changing the situation, and then learn yeah. to release it from your system and not work exactly. on it. And then yeah. you know once you're able to release it, and you realize there's no solution, 
then the burden is lifted upon you and it's lifted off you. So then you're able yep. to, to function because you realize that, okay, there's nothing I can do. I have to just focus on the present and just focus on the future and just, you know, and live life to, to the, you know, the level of whatever is going to make me happy. It's yeah, exactly. Because the, the, the emotional attachment is no longer there. So you can view it, <clears throat> you can view whatever happened much more dispassionately. You can say, okay, this happened to me, right? but it doesn't, it doesn't define who I am. Exactly. It's, not, it's no longer me. Um, it happened. I coped. I survived. One thing I say to people who, um, who, who are unhappy, I often say, your record of getting through difficult days, bad days, currently mm -hmm. stands at one hundred percent. Yeah. Because humans are amazing at adapting and coping and finding a strategy to deal with whatever they're having to deal with mm -hmm. might not be the right one. It might be, you know, something they just thought up, but it doesn't matter. We, we, we cope. Yes. Um, and we always do. We, we get to the end of every day and go, mm -hmm. maybe I could have done something different. Maybe I could have done something else, but it doesn't matter. I did it. Yes. Yeah. And that's an incredibly powerful takeaway. Um, so if any of your listeners are feeling like, how did I do it? doesn't matter. You did it. Exactly. You coped. I think that's an excellent point. And I, I think, you know, people have to realize too that, you know, um, you know, we all go through the ups and downs and people yeah. always get through it and they find a, a coping mechanism to get them through it, you know, but I think what, what's great about, you know, that remedial hypnosis is that people do get through and they move on, but a lot of people, they repress emotion. And it's still there. And even though they're they're moving forward inside, they're hurting, you know. Yes. And I, that's what yes. people don't realize is that okay, they got through it. They're strong. Look at that person. Wow, they're a great person. And they look fine on the outside. Yeah. But on the inside, that's where all the hurt and that's where all the maybe anger or depression and and you talk about, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder, all these are interrelated when we keep negative emotions and we keep traumatic events yeah. deep down inside of us, you know, yeah. illnesses come about. And I think I've said this on almost every show, 70% of illnesses are caused by stress because it's like, I want to get across to people that stress is such a, you know, it, it's, so, it, it, it's something that has to be dealt with. It's not something that could be dealt with lightly because when we have these things that happen to us if we don't learn some type of coping mechanism then we're going to open ourselves up to all these different types of conditions that you were talking about that you help people overcome yeah absolutely because whenever the mind um senses a threat it will automatically send a fight or flight response to the body yes um and when you're living in fight or flight, yeah, you, you, you stop fighting infections, your, your digestive system goes haywire, all sorts of things that, that um, can happen when, you, when you're holding negative emotions in your body. Um, yeah. One thing that um, a lot of people talk about is anxiety as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what people don't realize, um, why should they, is anxiety is an emotion. Yes. It's, it's not a disease. It's not a disorder. Right. It is an emotion. Right. If I didn't have a little bit of anxiety about an hour ago, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be sitting here. Right. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't have seen the value in talking to you. Right. You know, and, and you wouldn't be here either because you'd have gone to the beach or you'd have just say, oh, I can't, <laughs> can't be bothered. So anxiety is the emotion that tells us when something is too important to forget. Right. So when you patch your, your keys, your pocket in the morning to make sure you've got your house keys, um, that's a little bit of emo a little bit of anxiety. Yeah. It's when anxiety becomes overwhelming that it becomes an issue. Yeah. And that happens for one of two reasons. It's either the crew member who's in charge of this particular thing saying to the captain, 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 you need to pay attention. You need you need to pay that bill or you need to be go to that meeting or whatever. Yeah. The, ca the captain sticks his fingers in his ears and go, la, 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 I'm not listening to you. 
So that part of the crew, that 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 emotion will talk louder and louder until it's screaming, until you can hear nothing else. Yeah. So if you ignore it, it will get worse. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, if it's telling you, you need to pay that bill, and you say, well, I don't don't have the money. Right. That that's when anxiety becomes can become overwhelming because it's alerting you to do something which is outside of your control. Right. Stand up to that bully at work. I can't. I'm scared. Mm-hmm. Um, stand up to you know that that's that's the type of thing. The main thing I would say about anxiety is listen to what it's telling you. Mm-hmm. Listen to that crew member. It's it's not there to make you feel bad or to to torment you. It's saying this is something that you need to be aware of. Mm-hmm. Now it's not always correct. Um, and the example I use with clients is if you have a child and the child screams out in the middle of the night, mum, 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 there's a, there's a, a monster under my bed. Mm-hmm. You don't run into the room, grab the child, run out into the street, say, call the army, call the police. There's a monster, <laughs> there's a monster in my house. Right. No, you say to the child, it's okay. There's no monster. Mum's here. You're fine. You can right. go back to sleep. Mm-hmm. So when anxiety is telling us something, we listen to it and then we decide if that is appropriate mm-hmm. or whether the, the, the part of the crew is panicking over nothing. You know, if it says, you've got these exams coming up, it says, okay, I've revised, I've got them. I know what I'm doing. You right. can be quiet. Thank you for telling me, but I don't need you to shout at me anymore. Yes. So again, it's being in touch with ourselves. It's listening to what our mind's telling us, not to be afraid of, of our emotions. Right. Um, not to be afraid of our thought patterns. Um, everything that, that we have comes from inside ourselves. Mm-hmm. And once we can figure out what the message is, is the message correct? Do I need to take any action? Right. Um, um, health anxiety is is huge since COVID. You know, yes. um, people's minds are saying, "You've got a headache. Let's go to Google." Mm-hmm. Because yeah. Google will tell you you've got brain cancer. You've got this. You've got that. <laughs> yeah, you've got the other. Very true. And when, <laughs> yeah. And when your mind says you've got brain cancer, best thing to turn around and says, "Are you medically qualified? Do you, you know, is this true? No. Yeah. You know, no better than me if there's anything wrong with me. Right. If we will go and get it checked out, but for now, stop with all the cancer stuff or the the, the brain tumor stuff. You know, you yeah. don't know. So, um, having that relationship with your own mind is incredibly powerful. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I I had a bad habit um, earlier this year of picking up biscuits, cookies, um, and I would just you know I was I was just fed up with it and every time I walked past a cookie jar hand would go in Mm -hmm. so I had a conversation with my crew and said look these things are no good for me there's no nutrition in them bloody bloody blah and I actually looked and my last cookie was 10 weeks ago wow I've eaten a lot of apples since then because I said (laughs) every time you get a craving for a cookie have an apple yeah yeah So, (laughs) Mm -hmm. so um there's, there's, there's practical things you can you can use it for. Pain management is another one. Um, if somebody's suffering from pain that doesn't need to be there, um, it's a bit like having a, um, a fire alarm going off in your building. Yeah. The fire alarm goes off, you go out, you see there's no fire. So the next thing you do is you turn the fire alarm off. Mm-hmm. So when, when somebody's body is sending... Um, pain messages to the mind but the pain has actually been resolved you know medically they, that they're okay there's no reason for it right those messages can still be going through and again we just talk to that part of the crew that part of the subconscious and say you don't need to be doing this anymore right and it's like oh okay sorry <laughs> and again literally um the, the the pain has gone right so it's an incredibly powerful tool and you mentioned stage hypnosis a while ago, and unfortunately, whilst it can be very funny and very entertaining, it has um, created this this Stigmatism. view. Of, exactly, yeah, 
of hypnosis as something that, you know, you're going to be put to sleep and, and things will happen to you that are outside of your control. And uh, that's not the case at all. Right. Now, you said that you could actually learn different techniques that you could apply at home when you're going through different types of scenarios where, where if you're not feeling a, feeling well or you have a certain condition and you're trying to help that condition. Are there things that people could actually do and, and incorporate in their lifestyle? Yep. As as part of the, the, the three session protocol, the last session is mainly taken up with teaching people how to talk to themselves. Some people come to me after a couple of sessions and say, I'm, I'm having this great conversation with my subconscious and they, you know, they, they guess it. Yeah. But if not, we, we teach people actually how to, to talk to themselves, how to listen to themselves and um, how to, to have that negotiation, have that conversation right. with, the part, with the part of the mind that is not behaving badly, but is behaving through fear or through um, anger, maybe, or, mm -hmm. or whatever reason. And again, it's all part of treating the body as a whole. Um, right. Because once the mind is happy, it will send the, the endorphins, it will send the, the, the chemical signals to the body. Right. That, you know, everything's good up here, guys. You don't need to, to be stressed. You don't need to tense up. You can relax. Right. Now, I'm not saying that people who come to me will then go through life never being touched by any anything bad again, but what they will learn is how they can control the, themselves. Yeah. We, we can't control the weather. We can't control politics. We can't control basically anything that goes outside of us. Yes. But we can always control our own response. Yes. And... If people can wake up in the morning and go, you know what, I'm really happy I'm me, mm -hmm. even if there's stuff going on in their lives that they wouldn't wouldn't like to have, but yeah. go, I'm happy with me and I know that me and my crew, we we can deal with it, we can cope with it. Right. Um, that's a brilliant, brilliant place to be in. Oh, I agree completely. I feel, you know, it you know, we, we don't have control of certain things on the outside world, but if we're able to control ourselves and our actions and the way we feel and improve our lives so we can be happy with ourselves, you know, that's a, that's a humongous achievement because, you know, many people are not able to do that. They are capable of doing it. They just don't yeah. know how to do it. Yeah. 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 So many people these days feel disempowered by, by life. Yeah, life is life is hard, and um, there are so many things that they 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 get angry about or they can't control, so they get depressed or anxious. But learning those coping mechanisms means that they can say, "Okay, I can't do anything about that." Right. Therefore, there's no point in giving it time, giving it giving it headspace. Yes. Um, it will either happen or it won't, and nothing I can do will have any impact. Right. So worrying is is one of the most soul destroying and time wasting pastimes we can go through oh um, yes and if you say okay i can't do anything about it therefore i'll let it go what i will do is concentrate on what i can change mm -hmm. what i can influence what i can affect right. what i can do um and if there's nothing i can do well just let it go exactly 100% now, if you had to take a few things that we talked about today, what would you like to emphasize to the listeners about things that you think you really would like them to understand? Um, the first thing to understand is that we are all unique. Everybody has their own stories. Nobody has lived one day of your life or my life. Um, never mind, have the whole, <clears throat> excuse me, backstory. So everything that about you is within you yes um and it's just a matter of bringing that out and understanding why right again um so many of the, the problems come is that people i don't understand why i don't understand why so talking to to me or to to one of my control system practitioner colleagues is understanding the why right. when you've got that you can figure out the how 
Yes. Yes. That's... That that that's really important. And having that empowerment is is incredible. Oh, I agree a hundred percent. Totally. Now, what are some of the services that you provide? So um I work by by Zoom. Um mm-hmm because I'm based in a very rural part of central Portugal and whilst people can come and see me, it wouldn't be very practical. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I always, as I mentioned, I always do a free initial consultation. It takes about an hour. It's just a matter of getting to know each other, checking that this type of therapy works because about 20% of the population, 15, 20% just don't respond to hypnosis. Mm-hmm. No particular reason. It's nothing wrong with them. They just don't. So we, that's the first thing that we need to check is that it's it's appropriate for them. Right. Um, we then have the three sessions. In the very unlikely event that um, at the end of three sessions we don't feel like the work's complete, we carry on until it is mm-hmm. no extra charge. Um, so that that's basically what I do. I also won't run workshops, so to teach people the the, the method, um, mm-hmm. so that they can use it on themselves. Um, but the the actual remedial hypnosis consultation and sessions are the, the the mainstay of my business. And where can people find you? What is your website address? So my website is Out of Chaos Therapy. Um, I live in a small village called Chaos. Oh, um, really? Yeah. And there's a very famous quote, and I can't remember who it's by now, but it's Out of Chaos Comes Order. I like that. So outofchaostherapy.com. Um, and you can also find me on Facebook and uh, LinkedIn. And I'm not on Inst- well, I am on Instagram, but not very. Yeah, f- Facebook and LinkedIn. Okay, that's wonderful. Well, this has been amazing, and I I really enjoyed you coming on the show. I hope maybe you'll come on again. We can really dive deep in, into remedial, you know, hypnosis. I feel that it's very beneficial. Yeah. I feel that it's something that people could use in their daily lives. And once you learn the method, you could start applying it to your daily lives. And there's so many things that we go through on a daily basis and so many obstacles that come across in in life, you know, to be able to have that inner control and and not let life get control of us is is a very important factor. Yeah, absolutely. Once you've got your crew on your side, you can literally cope with anything. Right. Because because your mind and your body, your conscious mind, your subconscious mind, your body are all working together. Yes. And that's that's incredibly powerful. And I think that's something that people lack is that they can't get everything to work together as one, you know, yeah. and they they struggle because of that. So yeah. I think I think remedial hypnosis is an excellent therapy for people to learn to help them, you know, connect as one so they can move forward in life and have that life that they want. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this has been wonderful, Sarah. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I appreciate your time. I appreciate what you do. And I thank you for sharing all this knowledge today and with the listeners. And uh, I, you know, I, I look forward to maybe having you on again. Like I said, this has been a wonderful experience. Great. Thank you very much. Really enjoyed it. And thank you for inviting me on. It's been fantastic. Yes, I, I, I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Sarah. You have a great day. You too. Thank you.